I guess anyway, let's yeah. talk. Let's talk about what we were talking about. The uh, what you were saying. Yeah. Well, anyway, so there was this big vote in the Methodist Church, and long story short, they voted to say people who are gay, etc., homosexuality are not allowed to marry in the church and they're not allowed to become clergy. They're not allowed to become pastors, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this huge kind of outrage and grief over it because there's a lot of people who are in the, are involved with Methodism and, and really actually find a home in that and love the tradition and stuff and they're gay and they're homosexual. And they're very hurt by all this because they're like, they feel attacked. They feel like, you're saying we can't belong, you know? So, yeah. I mean, the whole, the whole Methodist thing is, is, is looking at splitting over this issue, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's, 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 it's sad and, you know, and, uh, and it's horrible, but I, 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 you know, when I look at it, I kind of be like, you know, when I see all, like how much, how many people are against this decision, right? I'm just like, that's not going to win in the end. You know, mm -hmm. it, it just seems obvious to me that yeah. in the end. So, let, let me ask you a question. There's a bunch of older folks who are kind of saying, I'm afraid of all this change. We yeah. Hang on to the old way. And that's just futile. That's just, you know, nobody can stop that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's happening? Let, let, me, um, let me ask you a question. What is it that inspires human beings to persecute someone else or to deny them the same rights that oneself has what is that urge that causes one human to treat another as lesser than themselves what is that yeah well i i hope that i, I i'm never inspired to uh you know um <clears throat> treat anybody as lesser than myself but i think i know what you're getting at here no 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 uh, i'm not getting at you i'm not talking about that i'm saying what is the instinct or what is the driving force behind persecution or denying somebody else their rights to you yeah, when, yeah. when you look at this problem what is it what is the what yeah. what is at the root of it because see that's right, the was, thing that's the thing I want to get to is like, if you deal with all these symptoms of, of the chaos in the world, if you deal with all the symptoms of the chaos in the world separately, you're forever treating symptoms and you don't get to the root. So that's yeah, the thing I'm, I'm interested in. What is the root of this human dysfunction of persecution of people destroying the environment? In, in my view, it, has, it all has a common root. And I think that's the thing that has to be addressed. What did Believe you say? In separation. Yes? Oh, self-preservation? The belief in separation. Yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is no. it. Because think about it. When two nations fight, it's because they feel separate. When one race oppresses another race, it's because they feel separate and different. When there's violence between people, yeah. it's because they feel disconnected, they don't feel connected. Yeah, I mean, even Watts, Watts said that back in the day. He was like, in order to kill people, and, and you know, you have to first make them other, you first have to take away their humanity. You, you have, have to, to dehumanize them, them. You have yeah, to demonize anything, them. You know, it's like the Nazis did to the Jews. Machines, you know, they, monkeys, they made the people. Jewish people their problem, and then it allowed them to do all of the horrible things to them because they had made them subhuman in their ideology. And, yeah, so it is that separation, see? And, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've tried to look at this as objectively as possible but that's the common root to all of the disorder we see with humanity that vote in the methodist church 
why did they vote to not give, um, you know, people in same sex relationships the, the same rights, um, you know, as traditional married couples have? It's because they see them as different. Yeah. They see them as fundamentally different. Right. You know, it's funny. I saw like a meme on Facebook or whatever. It was like somebody was out of frustration. They were like, has anyone like I've read they, they, the person was saying this, right? I've read the Bible several times. Is there anyone here that's read it and sees it as fundamentally a book that is about abortion and sexuality? <laughs> right. Because I don't see that. Why yeah. is it? that people care so much about well, those two things. You know? Abortion was a technology or was a procedure that didn't exist when the Bible was written. So, you know, any right. beliefs someone has around that are something that's been added on after the fact. And, you know, of course, in the Bible, it says thou shall not kill. Um, Jesus you know, um, said, turn the other cheek, among many other things that are attributed to, to Jesus. But, uh, you know, so the only thing they apply that to is let's protect fetuses. But it seems like so many Christians don't have a problem with a war or with executing convicts. So it's a strange thing. There's a weird disconnect there. Thou shall not kill fetuses. Yeah is kind of the way it's interpreted and then you know um yeah I, everything I else is okay kind of like <laughs> saying maybe we should um rename these immigrant children right like recent fetuses and maybe republicans will give a shit you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well i think it's like you said you know um people get in a certain mindset they get used to a certain culture and i've thought about this a lot recently but you know i live out in the country of course and there's a lot of good people who live in the country they're they're morally good people but a lot of them have a small view they they there's a lot they haven't been exposed to so if they see yeah. somebody with dreads and piercings or a mohawk or with a color skin that they're not used to, it might kind of set them off a little bit or put or put them off, you know. And then, yeah, you know. Well, it kind of goes back. Yeah. It's like, the you know, somebody I was talking to about this whole, this is somebody that's involved in the whole Methodist world with the whole thing that was been going on. And he was kind of saying like he's tried to have conversation with people and it wasn't really productive or fruitful and saying how you can't really communicate that much with words. There's so much experience there, you know, that really it's the experience of one person versus another that are clashing, you know, yeah. and that um, like you're saying, you know, it's like one person has gone through all this experience seeing people learning about people and the way they experience the world and one other group hasn't and their experience has been very different and change is scary new things are scary and, yeah um, it's hard to understand new things i and find so that to be a scary. good way um and it's something i read a great article like i think it was called trump and the rise of american authoritarianism and this was before he was elected you know quotes of course but um, they were pointing out the people who support authoritarians and, you know, Trump's kind of persona is this sort of authoritarian, powerful, strong man, the one who's going to save you from change, the one who's going to build a wall at the border, the one who is going to make America great again, you know, and that's yeah. the way they marketed him. Um, you know, uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, but, but that's right. The thing to remember, his supporters aren't bad people, but they're afraid. And fear will make people do some really crazy shit. 
Yeah. And some really destructive, harmful stuff. Um, Augie said something tonight. I'll read it. I'll read it. Um, he and I were in a Chinese restaurant and he, um, he popped these, these little things out. We're just sitting there eating Chinese food. It was just me and him. He said, fear is the enemy. Okay, fear is the enemy. And then a, late, a little bit, uh, just right after that, he said, the only way something can do good is love, right? <laughs> um, I thought those were cool quotes. The only way something can do good is love. And I know like you and I, we've talked a good bit about love. And, um, you know, like I was talking to Dave Roper about it too. <clears throat> and, you know, to me, love is the absence of belief in separation. In the absence of belief in separation, then you don't experience division and everything that arises from it. You know, it, it's like uh, the black baby and the white baby playing in a sandbox if neither one of them has been taught that someone with the other color skin is bad or someone with different color skin then they don't experience that they just experience each other as they are in that moment yeah but once you believe in the separation then you experience the division and I think this, this root, this is what allows us to destroy the environment that sustains us in the pursuit of imaginary wealth. We think we're separate yeah. from it, and we can exploit it to get this money, which the money, you know, I, it, it was not long ago where, I, I, at least in my view, I kind of see how it works. You know, the root is the belief in separation, ignorance. I call that ignorance, the belief in separation. And then that gives rise to fear because, you know, being separate is a very isolated and, and, and powerless place to be. It's very um, limited feeling and vulnerable, vulnerable to be separate. You're this one little bubble in the ocean of life and the smallest thing can pop it and you're destroyed, you're gone, if you believe in separation. You know? Right. It's kind of paradoxical. Let me, let me finish one thing. Let me finish one, one thing. Hand, like, I've been so, about let me finish one action. thing. Let me finish one point. So ignorance, I am separate, leads to fear, and then fear leads to greed. And greed is you're trying to accumulate to become safe. I just wanted to finish that, but that's what occurs to me. Yeah. That's how we get to greed. No, I think it makes sense, you know? Right, and I like the greed thing, right? It's like attachment, right? In like spiritual circles and Buddhism and stuff, they talk about non-attachment. And it's kind of interesting because attachment, it's almost like, you're trying to connect, right? But really, the non-attachment thing is more like when you're not attached, I see it as you are entering into the stream of life and you're becoming one with it. Like you're not hanging on to anything in particular. You are, the non-attachment to me is kind of synonymous with freedom right i'm just letting go like that's what i've been thinking about lately is and this reminds me of you because you had that moment at the sink where you said you know i just don't know anything and you just kind of like let go you know and embraced uncertainty mm -hmm. and for me it's like i was talking with jessica earlier i'm like you know there is all this stuff i was using the analogy because i was standing by a door and i was like you know really we're walking around with all this baggage and holding all this stuff and you know, we walk, you know it's like this door you know what is this door what does it mean why is it here where is it gonna go you know <laughs> and it's all of these questions we have and it's like yeah, just let it go you know <laughs> why did this happen why does that happen? what's gonna happen why, you know <sighs> and yeah there's a time and a 
ways to think about all that. But at the end of the day, all of that is such a drain on our energy. And yeah. um, it weighs us down. And it's like, you know, you know children don't do that. I, you know? I, and I, I think what you're talking about is our brain and our abstract thinking brain. And it can form ideas about a past, memories of a past, and ideas about a future, and um, among other things, and it can get real complex real, real fast. Um, yeah, you got bunny ears right now, bro. You got full on bunny ears. 